Recently, I covered an absolutely ridiculous story out of a school where students and parents and the entire community essentially were backing this walkout over a teacher using the N-word. Now, in that video, which you can watch, a link in the description and in the iCard right there for those of you on YouTube, I talked about how the teacher did not call the student the N-word, the teacher did not use the N-word in any way that was hurtful, the teacher demanded that the students stop using the N-word, and when the students kept asking for clarification, he ultimately ended up saying the word. And because the students trapped him, because they recorded him secretly, this became a story, and because the adults decided to act like children, nobody pointed out that all this teacher did was tell his students to stop swearing in the classroom. Normally something that parents would side with the teacher with, but of course, this time, everybody in the community had to act like children. Now, unfortunately, all too often, that is how student activism works in the United States of America. We have granted the left wing complete and utter control over our public K-12 through education system. They teach them to not only be victims, perpetual victims, but to be cry bullies, and then the adults in the community rally behind them, and they all play this game in an effort to grift money off the taxpayers, even though, again, all these institutions are being run by the left wing. However, sometimes reality breaks through. Sometimes even the most left wing areas actually give us a glimmer of hope. And that's what we're going to talk about today, because in this story, the students have had enough, but they haven't had enough with evil white supremacy out in the ether or any of those made up issues in our public school system. They've had enough with the equity and discipline program that makes their school schools essentially a war zone so that's what we're going to talk about today but before we get into that this video is sponsored so let me chuck it to the sponsor one-handed chuck right there then we'll bring it back over here and we'll talk about it on the other side if you've noticed an increase in wrinkles fine lines and bags under your eyes guess what you might not just be dealing with the normal signs of stress because of the new year you might actually have had a decrease in your production of collagen within your body. You might also be noticing that your skin elasticity is a little bit down, your hair's thin, and your skin overall is also thin. This is largely due to the fact that our body slows down its natural collagen production, and one of the things you could do to fight back against it is go over to healthwithjustice.com and get yourself this amazing collagen powder. There are five different types of collagen in here. It will make you look and feel younger, and and this amazing formula can be yours risk-free 60-day money-back guarantee for 51% off at healthwithjustice.com. Restore your collagen today, healthwithjustice.com. As you can see, more than 100 students walked out of Medford High School today in protest of the way things have been running at the school. Their main concern here is safety. So Medford High students actually initiated a walkout. And of course, like I said in the intro, when I first heard about this, I was a little bit worried. I thought that this was going to be one of those ridiculous government-coordinated walkouts like the March for Climate that was endorsed by left-wing school districts districts or the March for Our Lives, which was a totally manufactured campaign after the fallout of Parkland. But no, in this instance, the students are walking out due to the fact that Medford in Massachusetts has some of this equity in suspension nonsense that has allowed violence to progress throughout their schools. One of the things that these students are in demand of is actual security because they don't feel safe walking the halls. And by the way, none of the students name this by name, but they're identifying the problems without even realizing it because again our school system doesn't train these kids to identify the problems with left-wing institutions because it's run as a left-wing institution but let's go into the video so you could hear a little bit more about it does anyone feel safe no no, no. no. Not, nobody <laughs> Here you have this girl asking the students around her if they feel safe at this high school, and they say no. And by the way, this is how a lot of students feel going to school in the United States of America, and this is just kind of accepted as a norm, something that we just have to ignore in this nation as a whole. The fact that our schools are just vectors for gang membership, for violence, for all kinds of intimidation and crimes, and we're all just supposed to deal with it because, you know, we wouldn't want to criticize the behavior of certain kids in certain in schools because that might make you a bit of a racialist if you point out what's going on. One by one, students flowed out of Medford High School this morning, a place they say has been problematic recently. There's a lot of people bringing knives to the school and, and, and vapes and everything. No, I can't feel safe. I walk down the halls by myself. I don't know if 
anybody has a gun. But again, look at the faces of the kids that are stepping up, that are doing this walkout, that are angry that there's no security at their school due to the fact that we had this whole Black Lives Matter movement and we had to defund the police and decriminalize our education system because God forbid the school to prison pipeline would be a real thing. I don't know if you guys know this, but it turns out the reason that young teenagers end up going to jail more often is because our schools actually have a pipeline to the prison and it's a metaphorical pipeline but it's best to think about this ridiculous notion as if it's a literal pipeline this kid is talking about walking the halls of his school i can't feel safe i walk down the hall by myself i don't know if anybody has a gun like a girl walking in an alleyway at three o'clock in the morning in the shadiest part of town that's how bad that school is i just want to see like more like security in like each bathrooms because every time there's not a security or anyone there watching the bathrooms there's usually like some bad stuff happening there <laughs> The bathroom is where this fight happened at the beginning of the week, leaving one student hospitalized with stab wounds. Now, I completely blocked out that video for obvious reasons. The local news blurred it, but you could still kind of see what was going on. Essentially, what was happening was the students were fighting, two of them in the bathroom. One student pulled out a knife and stabbed the other student. But included in this was actually a whole crowd of students video recording this, and nothing was going on. No security was intervening while this was happening all these kids were allowed to gather in the bathroom make all this noise a student ended up in the hospital but since security is incredibly lax at medford high school nobody was doing anything and by the way you can actually go look up medford high school and their disciplinary policy and one of the things that you'll find is that they bring in the social workers to make sure kids feel and understand equity whenever they're talking about anti-bullying programs you can see where their headspace is at but the students are absolutely sick of it and again it's gotten so bad where they don't feel safe going to the bathroom in their own school we do not support or tolerate violence of any kind the superintendent here says the person with the knife has been expelled so the superintendent talks about how oh well don't worry we don't tolerate violence because the kid that did the stabbing got expelled after the stabbing but the thing is and one of the things you can get from these kids out there in the protest is that this was not one incident and thankfully they suspended the kid who did the stabbing but i wonder what the previous history of that kid actually was i'm guessing he wasn't just this peachy human being who never had any violations in the school i'm guessing that this superintendent that again has references to equity in terms of discipline on the website for the school district likely had instituted policies maybe they came from the top from the biden administration that were soft on that student in particular and thus that's creating the problem again you have these students talking about how not just this stabbing weirded them out but how too many kids have knives in the schools people bringing knives to the school and, and vapes and everything how they're worried about walking the hallways of their classroom because one of the students could have a gun and they feel like they're under threat all of this seems to be tolerated repeatedly in the medford high school system so her talking about how oh don't worry about it i got a plan we're gonna block off some of the bathrooms during the day so that way we can deal with the violence we're going to deploy staff instead of talking about security again nationwide we've seen the pullback of school safety officers i remember after the whole thing in uvalde john oliver did a whole segment about how school safety officers are bad and we need to get rid of them because something something the problem was is that the cops intervened too much in that incident it's ridiculous it's absurd obviously you need to do something and sending out a counselor here and there to guard the bathroom she's commending students for expressing their concerns and says the school will announce new bathroom safety plans in which certain facilities are blocked during the day we're trying to look at where students are where we have the highest congestion congestion of students and then um, deploying staff to support with um, bathroom supervision and making sure that we have a limited number of students going into the bathroom and blocking off the bathroom during the day so students can't use the bathroom that's for the students during the course of the school day is not a solution it is an asinine proposal but what do you expect from these asinine people who refuse to acknowledge reality it seems like the medford school system often has no arrests in their schools which is interesting because the students are talking about how many kids 
are armed, how many fights there are, how many threats of violence they feel, and yet, weirdly, that arrest column is zero. And I'm not saying you should be arresting the kids for absolutely everything, but when you have students walking out of a school, not over one incident, but over a series of incidents involving weapons, violence, students bringing those weapons and committing violence, it's really weird that when I look at your arrest column, I see a big fat goose egg. It's really weird that only after this stabbing went viral, do we first hear about somebody being arrested at the Medford school? What the hell is going on here? Obviously, they're trying to balance the scales, create cosmic justice, enforce Joe Biden's ridiculous suspension policy that focuses on proportionality in terms of population rather than behavior, and that's what these kids are walking out over. Meantime, during the walkout, kids were skeptical such plans will work, but hoping more security in and around the school will help. You know, normally the kids are the dumb ones. Normally the kids are the embarrassing ones, and that's because the kids are often an extension of the parents. Think about Greta Thunberg. She's just regurgitating the stuff that her parents scared her with, and she gets national acclaim, never gets any challenge or anything like that by her own side, and she's just put up as this pillar of virtue that children should aspire to be. And when those are your role models, you get some pretty dumb and useless kids. But in this instance, they tell the kids, don't worry, we talked to the superintendent. She said they don't tolerate violence. Isn't that great? She, she just said that they don't tolerate violence. Also, she said that she thinks she wants to shut down some of the bathrooms so you can't use them during the day. Also, she added that they're going to limit the amount of people that can be in the bathrooms because that's what they need to do. And they're going to use school staff, not necessarily security, to supervise you while you're in the bathroom. And if I was a student at that school, I would think that the issue isn't whether or not a guidance counselor is going to watch me take a piss. The issue is the fact that there are so many armed students committing crimes in the school. That would be the top priority. But, you know, that's where the superintendent's head's at. And this is where the kids' heads are at. I want to be going somewhere where I feel safe. Um, I don't want to be going places where I feel like I'm in danger. I feel like I'm in danger for just learning. First of all, I like that kid. They're in a walkout, but they're still kids who makes a sign towards the camera because he wants to be on camera. Really appreciate his energy. That's a true high school kid right there. But let's cut back to what this girl is saying because I kind of undercut her in order to highlight this hero of the day. I want to be going somewhere where I feel safe. Um, I don't want to be going places where I feel like I'm in danger. I feel like I'm in danger for just learning. And if I'm in danger for just learning, I might as well just stay home. Look, I don't get a lot of white pill moments, as you kids call them on the internet.com, but this is definitely one of them. Here you have kids in public schools that are absolutely fed up. They're fed up with this left-wing governance. They're fed up with this nonsense. And by the way, if you don't think that this is a left-wing area, in another news story covering this, there was an overhead shot of the police, and you could see they're crossing a rainbow crosswalk. So everything is decorated in the symbols of left-wing acceptance, but what these students actually want is more security at their public schools. They're identifying the problem. And what's also a relief is that the kids that you're seeing, the faces that you're seeing, are the very same childrens that the left wing claim that they want to protect. They claim that these black and brown kids need to be saved by having no consequences for the violent ones in their schools because consequences for violent kids is supposedly racism. Well, look what's going on. What we always talk about on this channel the fact is the majority of these kids actually want to go to school. They want to have an education. They don't want to live under threat of violence, but those violent people are disrupting their education. They're the problem. You need to remove them from the school to save the other students. This idea that we show mercy to the worst in our society and bring the whole group down never made any sense to me. You have to get those people out of there. And these students recognize this despite all the propaganda that they're getting living in the state of Massachusetts. So yes, this is my white pill, but again, we need to fight back against this equity agenda, which by the way, comes from the federal government at this point in time. It also comes from the Massachusetts state government, from the local school board, and yes, from the superintendent who thinks that the solution to this problem is to have guidance counselors watch these students when they're in the bathroom, not actually have security in the schools and deal with the fact that all these kids are carrying weapons and they feel comfortable not only having a but having all the other students film it and then a knife comes out and nobody freaks out and no 
nobody even flinches who's filming. They just watch their fellow student get stabbed. It's not normal. It should not be acceptable. It has been normalized in this country, in certain parts of this country, but we're going to address it. We're going to fight back against it, and we're going to fix some of these schools. And these students actually fighting back against the propaganda is actually a good step in that direction. Now, unfortunately, the Medford Teachers Union did strike couple weeks ago because they want all their benefits and they want to deal with less things in the school so that's really what the city's going to be focusing on and you're going to have to address that problem in order to deal with it but yeah this is where we are right now and my support goes to these students but hey those are just my thoughts let me know your thoughts down in the comments below if you like this video show me by leaving a like you can follow me on all my social media support me via the support links in the description box of this video this has been me talking about the medford students actually walking out for something good until next time.